and that the ways the video drone resonates will ultimately warrant unsettling your ability to divorce its messages from the cesspool in which we all wallow. In previous times, when a cultural producer or public intellectual deconstructed the contours of reality, it was given that there was existed a reality to be scrutinized. Since then, dissolution of absolute truths, postmodern, ultramodern, automodern discourse, the conflation of fact and fiction, the wholesale obsolescence of scientific rigor and other traditional forms of authority, including the hegemony of all that is natural, all that is sacred, etc., has made evident that a new image of horror must emerge. Monsters are death vehicles for demonstrating the way worlds work and the so-called world is being coming eclipsed literally by polytechnics of speed to the extent that significant concerns of human civilization have grown impoverished, lost out to the play of attention. Dominant issues don't concern queries such as why must we suffer and die and relatedly who am we, but essentially concern disambiguity the immediate now when the name status update at a time. Excuse me while I go. All of this, and some of this, concerns the humanoids dressed as monsters, and monsters dressed as humanoids, the fictive physical cabal known to the denizens of Portland Earth as weird fiction. Equating the shrieking, immemorial lunacy of multimedia streams, Floating data clouds, distribution server farms, info flows, network catacombs and microblogs, selfies, and other computational minutia. We have long operated on the innards of the technocultural imagination. In this way, we might call video drill or Cronenberg himself a, perp a perpetuator of anticipatory plagiary of the weird fiction. But such a temporal one upmanship is beyond the scope of this presentation. Surely the measure of supreme hallucination is triggered not by SNM, as suggested by the Purdue Berry context, but more likely by the horrid rituals of SNM. In our hyper contemporary moments, we find the global economy in crisis halted by automation issues as readily as planes are grounded for the same sort of quote unquote. Accidents. With China's stock plummeting and the EU on the brink of the Brexit, we are reminded of the bitter pill asserted by Harlem that corporate video pirate and tonight's film were for claims. The world's getting tough. Very, very tough. We're entering savage times and we're going to have to be pure and direct and strong if we are going to survive. Homo provocateur Jean Bonnard. Compares global debt in parallel universes back in 1996 when he warns of looming time bombs. Entities hovering outside of linear time, outside of Earth's orbit. In entities including the global debt, flows of capital, and nuclear payloads that might land like a UFO. Let me see this in Mexico. Bringing with them small intrusions that will have to disrupt the fragile equilibrium that undergirds our existence. I would like to take the opportunity to map out several nodes in the matrix, which includes the drummers, or logics of speed as it plays out physically and culturally, the specter of the remote neural monitoring vis a vis social media, video drone as disruptive innovation, as theory object creating attention by resonating culturally new frequencies, and the rise of bunker technology, captions, and in interest of providing a biological metaphor amidst all this tech talk. The cocoon. I believe the cocoon and developmental stages of embryo, larva, pupa, imago as a framework for my presentation. Part one: embryos of knowledge. The trajectory of dissolved truths, simultaneous certainties and fantasies, and the wholesale obsolescence of authority has deserted the denizens of Earth to battle not for dominant political positions, nor to rupture the chains of wrongdoing in society, but merely to optimize their always already obsolescent spread. Today's world is an endlessly unreal doomsday, a blight on reality that becomes the Xerox, the surface world, hyper-reality, chemical, pigmental sense, or what have you. 
Difficult times call for laborious logistics. It is indeed difficult to entertain it everywhere in a world of dissolved truths, deregulated laws that as it's in yesterday's figments of authority, that there's no longer a surplus of potential futures. The only living, breathing resort is to reverse engineer the future in the technological developments that promise its arrival. Here, we can weaponize advantageous situations from the past in the last ditch effort to zero out its butterfly effects, achieving uncanny offsets, remastered embryos, temporary autonomous clones, or if the pilots of television dubs, generating the instilled decipherable messages. Along with emergent knowledge structures, many have theorized time space compression and its mutative qualities. Ronellis calls this immediate now. Sterling, the atemporal, while the French fry theory fictions of Paul Virilio to pull in gemology, a logic of speed in which we all must become fluent. Of the total possible jargon of white employ, to clarify the miasmic clouds and thereby bring clarity and direction to the ways in which the technological conquest of light and our conception of it is fashioned, comma, most simply replace the cloud with the cocoon. Ignore opportunities that act out with their own inborn apparatuses. Cinema is the default cocoon, a pocket sized techno social bunker of YouTube videos consumed on a smartphone. This is not so strange. We have seen this sort of diversion before. Many pleasure seekers in the heyday of the automobile pulled into part of the cocoon of the driver. Television eventually obsolesced the last modicum of communal sociality there relinquishing control, literally, to armchair dictators of sound and speed, lords of the living room, or technocrats of the domestic sphere. Casa de comprende? Of course, movie images, entertainment has been proven means of automating and making comfortable ideological imperatives across the time. And in all these already mediated moments, it is possible in the emerging to return to the audiovisual tomb to excavate bygone misses from within seemingly outmoded forms of tech <laughs> The monsters have become real while the effects have lost their spell. Further, the cinematic conquest of time and space at Elkhorn in 1983 is utterly slow in 2015. Thus, we are emboldened to engage in signals not as mindless consumers, but mindful prosumers, breaching through the screens as pregame to the challenges of life. Video drama theory travels faster than the speed of thought, or even the most coke addled intellectual in the early 80s. Today, the rear view mirror shades, and I might add, emboldened with the legalized legumes of the cannabis plants, one can comprehend and meaning, tap into the signal, deploy future shock absorption. In other words, Cronenberg, a Canadian maestro of techno body horror, sent a message to the future, that is, our now, a secret message garbled in 1983, but totally incoherent. We are the new flesh, or perhaps the weird flesh. Part two. Lark. The juvenile forms vying for eventual metamorphosis slash transformation. Listen, Cronenberg's films are, together, their own writing corpse of techno sociological critique. Prescient insight, adject gems mummified within this year's moving image in front of the distinctly whimsical version of transformation and radicalization in video games. You might split it into another species of virilial dermology, of video dermology, or the return of the repressed capacities for emotion and action, dormant sensibilities issuing like a ratch on the surface of desire. We have the story of civic TV, headed by a particularly creepy and ostensibly Canadian Max Wren, a fictional character portrayed by actor James Wren. Wren is the director of a small TV station in Toronto that caters to emo violence and pornographia in all shades of unappetizing pageantry. Discovering the pirate channel for non-narrative mutilation, kink, horror, and hard bodies, Red becomes preoccupied. This obsession is induced primarily by the video game signal itself. Take the shape for Red and the hallucinatory visions is breakdown psychically, psychologically, and corporately. Aided by the videographic immortal known as Professor Oblivion, Rem resists being subsumed by the electronic dominion of the video drama, weaponizing selective attention. He commits what we understand today as a Facebook suicide, opting not for new media, the social media, but to become the new flesh, a cyborg of amputation and amputation. Director Cronenberg is a giant of occult cinema maven, one who voices with insight the traffic technological.
technological the cybernetic condition that is as mundane as it is urgent. In 1983, and through to this day, the video drum signal is, as Deborah Harry's character explains, an extended presence of amplified emotion. Stimulation such as connectivity and attention are sought fiendishly and consumed rapidly with little concern as to how and why. Blinded by the cyber liberatory rhetoric of information, as South's mass ignorance has, in Pavlovian fantastic ways, reinforced the dismissal of our own human beings. <laughs> and another immediate example we have the videographic aggregates. The starkness of so many brown people murdered and blind down the streets. Our vigilance is disfigured in the commodified and intellectual gesture of liking. What is it that we like? The worst thing that can happen to an individual is to know too much, thus to fall beyond knowledge, writes Bourgeois in 1986. Carrying his condemnation of data accumulation to seemingly amputated hands, with the ability to respond, including that mass access to image works, quote, far from exalting some sort of collective solidarity, and only demonstrates our real impotence and drives us to panic and resentment. As we continue to wallow in totally liberating information, self similar patterns become accompanied by some effects and filter balls of cocoon. We perform the same sort of distance in our own school monitoring as the connected obligations of social media. <coughs> Part 3. People, un people undergo this Christmas and pulling back the layers. Under the old skin of science fiction, the new skin of filter, bo filter balls, where no news is bad news, and hard reality. At best, partial hallucination. When video drew, and it's true, a procedure of fiction, obsolescence of the real, even the stubbornly cynical among us, draw back, numb by the uncanny spectacle of this On the other hand, escaping cognitive entropy with the proper tools, much can be gleaned from that technology. With the shiny effects that signal to attempt to view the limits of cinematic spectacle, technological necropsy can be as elegantly simple as occupying their channels and now making them in one broadcast. Here, the gentrifying forces do not bother to raise our survivors, do not pursue self similar patterns of thought through architectural humans, instead past, present, and future whole new world of different Part 4. Imagine. In tonight's film, we'll learn about Civic TV, a TV channel posted as the one you take to bed. A sleazeball variant of personalization by which an algorithm selectively guesses what information would you like to see based on the past, quick behavior, and search history. The pervasive notion that one becomes a person via technologization of the self is not only the black box fallacy that boosts my control to see what we have drawn by signal. Beyond this knowledge, there is the realization that you are, in fact, on the inside surface of a more Basic cocoon of cybernetic mentors, what we have already imagined, print out the data, distribute to multiple platforms, engage in business as usual. Indeed, in yesterday's parade of global economy disrupting accidents, the authorities noted, rightly, that this was not a cyber breach. After all, how can we be breached or violated by cybernetic ghosts, ghost worlds, if that is what you already exist? If you think such fantastical democracies and distributed justice is just the euphemist of weaving, format wars, Betamax and VHS, iPhone and Android, etc., perhaps the proprietary information for you is to remember that the odds are against you are exponentially during the future attention economy. The cracks are becoming apparent and the crumbs of existence evidently have been swept 